Hey, Mike here. Just wanted to sort of post something very, very quickly. I had a comment earlier on another video that talked about how the video was about Pulumi and sort of Terraform versus Pulumi. And there was a bit of a debate going on actually about how there's quite strong positive uptake of the idea behind Pulumi, which is you use any programming language you sort of like, like Ruby, JavaScript, Python, so on and so forth. And then you use that and you use the Pulumi SDK to then provision infrastructure. And then, of course, with Terraform, you write HCL, and then you provision Terraform. Now, Terraform has a has a SDK as well, as a cloud SDK as well. However, I've never used it, and I don't plan on using it. Now, the reason the debate has got quite heated is because my video was pretty controversial in that it essentially said Pulumi and using cloud SDKs just isn't a good idea because when you're writing code that allows you to do anything to implement your infrastructure you can go wild with that code and then you start running into the exact same problem that software engineers run into when they're developing software in the form of what does uh, do i do classes do i do oop do should i make this a library now how many functions do i need should i split this all out instead of different functions and the problem you're going to get with pulumi and cloud sdks in general is as you move from company to company you've got to start again with understanding how that actually works. Whereas with Terraform and HCL, you don't. If you want to implement a resource in Terraform, there's only one way to do it. You implement a resource. There's no other way of doing it. If you want to implement an, an, an AWS instance, you implement a resource of type AWS underscore instance. You give it a name and then you define its properties and you do Terraform apply and off it goes. You've got no other choice. There's nothing else you can do. Like, it, it's just, it's going to be consistent. And then when you move from company to company and they say, we use Terraform, you know what to expect and the learning curve is going to be much flatter. It's going to be much lower. All you really have to learn is how they've organized their code, which will add a bit of a curve, right, a tiny little curve. And that's about it because the language will be very consistent. And so I run by a philosophy personally when it comes to implementing solutions. And it's the whole keep it, keep it simple, stupid, right? KISS, K-I-S-S as it is. But I actually go a little bit further than that and I say, keep it simple, but keep it so simple that a junior level engineer could maintain it for years to come. Now, here's what I mean by that. Let's say your IT operations are at such a high scale and you have so many microservices that you need Kubernetes. Fine, then you need Kubernetes. I'm not addressing people at that scale. That's a unique situation to be in. <clears throat> It's actually a rare situation to be in as well. Not many organizations do that. However, what most organizations do is they'll have one or two applications, maybe three monoliths that they want to put on the internet. Here's what you need to do that. You need a load balancer and you need a pair of EC2 instances per application. So if you've got three applications, you need three load balancers and you need six EC2 instances behind each one. And it's really that simple. Or you can have one ALB and you can do domain level matching at the ALB level, and then you can target different target groups, and then you have different target groups target different EC2 instances, and perhaps they're in an auto-scaling group. Now, is that going to be more expensive than maybe setting up a six-node Kubernetes cluster and then having your workers also scale up and down? Potentially, but I'll tell you what isn't going to be, I'll tell you what is going to be really expensive is when you need to hire someone with the Kubernetes skills to maintain that for you even if you're using EKS, right? Because those skills are far more complicated because that whole stack is far more complicated. And in order to implement it properly, you're meant to really be using things like Argo, CD, and Flux because you're meant to be doing GitOps with things like Kubernetes. I'm going to make a JSON a manifest file. I'm going to do a Git push, and then it goes live, and then things happen. That's all very, very complicated, and a junior can't maintain that. So you've got to hire skilled workers with experience in order to get in order to implement it in that way. And here's the problem. Those people are going to be way more expensive than your six EC2 instances. They're going to be way more expensive than 26 EC2 instances running your application versus the junior that can maintain all of them. All of that versus your Kubernetes expert is going to be way cheaper in the long run than this expert. Now, I'm not saying that Kubernetes should never be an option. You'll reach a point where actually the amount of money you're really out of cash flow that you have in a business is so big that you can afford to hire a skilled worker to implement Kubernetes and then you can and then simplify sort of 
those processes and put it in Kubernetes. That's fine. That is a thing. But at the very beginning, for most organizations, keeping it as simple as possible so that a junior level engineer can maintain it means that you only need a few skilled staff and then you can have junior to mid-level engineers maintaining and doing all of the BAU. So that's why I like Terraform with HCL and I like my declarative language rather than the imperative language because I know exactly what I'm going to get. The learning curve is going to be lower. It's going to be much, much simpler to maintain going forward and it means that I can give it to a junior, teach that junior Terraform in a weekend and off they go, their provisioning infrastructure. As far as I'm concerned, that just completely outscales the, the the power that you would get from things like Pulumi and, and writing something in Python. And if you want custom functionality in Terraform, write a provider. Go is not the hard of a language to learn. And when you do learn it, you'd be way better off for it anyway. That's my two cents. That's all I've got to say. I am still alive, by the way. I know the, I know the channel's been quite quiet, but I'll be popping up videos from time to time. So I am here. Don't worry. I'll see you soon in another video. I hope that was helpful.